the Warlock is slowly becoming one of my favourite classes in Baldur's Gate 3. So it's time for us to tackle the Old Great One. Subclass. So this is my levels 1 to 12, including a combat tutorial, as well as a few items for you to take. And obviously at level 1 we begin with Warlock, and you already know it, of course Eldritch Blast. So for our cantrips we are going to take Eldritch Blast as said, and we're also going to take Bone Chill. Now I like Bone Chill because the target is unable to heal, and I think that's a real big benefit, and have disadvantage on their attack rolls, which means not only is it a good damage dealing spell, but as a support spell it works very nicely. And of course for your subclass we're going to take the Old Great One. This gives us Mortal Reminder. We land a critical hit against a creature. That creature and any nearby enemies must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. For your spells, we're going to take Hex, which is a bonus action concentration spell, which means that you can pick a ability for the target to have disadvantage on, and we do an additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage every hit. We're going to pair this off very nicely with the Armor of Agathis, and this can be upcasted further into the game, meaning we'd gain temporary hit points and deal cold damage to anyone that hits us within melee range. For your ability points, we're looking at something like this, so an 8 in strength, 14 dex, 16 constitution, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom, 16 charisma. And for your proficiencies, take whatever you feel like. Warlock level 2. Now warlocks are semi-easy to level up. Uh, we gain two passives here though, as well as a new spell. And we're going to start with Hellish Rebuke. This is a reaction that deals 2 to 25 damage, and this is really good. Especially the power spike you get at further levels. And for your Eldritch Invocations, we're going to buff up our Eldritch Blast. Firstly, we have an Agonizing Blast. And this will add our Charisma modifier to our damage. And Repelling Blast, which will push enemies 4.5 meters away. And this move alone has one meter bunch of fights. When you blast an enemy and throw them off a balcony or a beam, something like that. Okay, Warlock level 3, we have improved Warlock spells. So most of your Warlock spells have become more powerful. And we gain a new passive in our Pact Boon. Now before all that, we get one spell and we are going to take Mirror Image. I think Mirror Image is phenomenal because it's a great move for buffing yourself up, adds to your AC, and it's not concentration. It just lasts until you get hit. And of course, we're going to take Pact of the Blade, summon a Pact Weapon, or bind the one you're wielding, making it magical. Pact Weapons use the wielder's spellcasting ability instead of strength or dex, which means our charisma is our, is our uh, wielder's ability modifier. And whatever weapon you bind, you become proficient with. So even if you're not proficient with a weapon, once you bind it, you have proficiency with it. Now just note, you don't have to follow my guidelines for spells, but a Warlock will always cast spells at the highest possible level. There's no options for selecting different spell slot levels. So just bear that in mind, a move like Mirror Image will work further into a battle, better than it will early on, because you don't want to cast Mirror Image upscaled. Okay, Warlock level 4, access to a new feat. Before that we have our cantrip, and we are going to take Poison Spray. One of my favourite cantrips in the game, I think it's just amazing. And for a spell, we're going to take Hold Person. And of course our ASI, we're going to bump our Charisma up to 18. Now Warlock level 5 gives us a few really key things here. Number 1, we have a Deepened Pact. So, please with your service, you gain a new Pact Boon. And Blade Pact Holders gain an extra attack with their Pact Weapon. So really good stuff. As well as access to high spells, and there's only one option, and that is the Hunger of Hadar. This basically is like darkness, but it's damage dealing. So you make a big black sphere, anyone inside it is blind, and creatures that start on the turn take 2 to 12 cold damage, and creatures ending it have the possibility to take 2 to 12 acid damage. It's also class as difficult terrain. And for an Eldritch Invocation we're going to take Devil's Sight. So this allows us to see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, up to 24 meters. Okay, Warlock level 6 gives us Entropic Ward. As a reaction, we can impose disadvantage on attack roll against us. And if the attack misses, we gain advantage on our next attack roll against that attacker for one turn. So you can't target other people, but you can target the one that tried to hit you. Again, we have access to higher level spells, and we're going to take Darkness. Warlock level 7, another passive, and a new spell. And for this one, we're going to take Envard's Black Tentacles. One of my favourite spells in the game, much like the Hunger of Adar. This basically has tentacles sprout from the ground, making it difficult to end, attacking and smothering creatures within. Now this is concentration, so you could throw this up, throw a darkness up, stand within darkness and just wallop people. And for an Eldritch Invocation, we're going to take Fiendish Vigor to get 7 temporary hit points when we leave camp after a long rest. 
Warlock level 8 has access to a new feat as well as a new spell. And at this point, we're going to take Counter Spell. And our AS line to bump our Charisma up to 20. Okay, we're at level 9 now. New passive and a new spell. For our spell, we're going to take Telekinesis because this is a really good spell that I think is underutilized. You can throw a creature or an object and you can basically just throw people off the ledges and stuff like that. It's really, really good. And for an Eldritch Invocation, we're going to take Minion of Chaos so we can conjure an elemental. Now, Warlock level 10, we have a Thought Shield, Psychic Resistance. So, we gain resistance to psychic damage, and your patron doesn't appreciate attempts to attack your mind. When you take psychic damage, your attacker takes the same amount. Really, really good at basically deflecting attacks and damage back to people. For a cantrip, we will take Minor Illusion. And for a spell, we will take Hold Monster. Now, Warlock level 11, we have access to a bunch more spells here. And the first one we're going to take is Circle of Death. 8 to 48 damage, and you basically just sculpt a massive sphere of devastating damage. It's really, really good. We also have access to a new spell, and for this one, we will take Banishment. And then at our final level, level 12, we have access to another passive and feat and a spell. So for the spell, we're going to take Dimension Door just to help us get around the battlefield. And in the later stage of the game, Dimension Door is really good. Um, I will always love Misty Step because it's a bonus action. But Dimension Door is really good for teleporting two people next to each other out of danger. And for me, the only Eldritch Invocation to take at level 12 is Life Drinker. Your melee attacks do additional necrotic damage equal to your Charisma modifier, which is currently sitting at plus 5 due to our 20 in that stat. And for a feat, we are going to take Alert to get a plus 5 to initiative and cannot be surprised. Okay, when it comes to items, it'd be very easy for me to just say, put on the Helldusk armor, best armor in the game, and then don't get hit. But you're probably going to have a fighter or a paladin or someone in your party that can really benefit from having that armor more. So what do we do? Well, and this is my personal preferred setup. We start with Birthright, plus 2 to Charisma, and that's up to level 22. The Cloak of Displacement. At the beginning of the wearer's turn, the cloak activates and grants enemies disadvantage on attack rolls that target the wearer. The disintegrating Night Walkers to give us access to Misty Step, as well as stopping us being enwebbed, entangled, ensnared, or slipping on ice and grease. The normal Held Dusk Gloves. So, we gain a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell save DC, and our weapon attacks deal an additional 1 to 6 fire damage, which is really good. It also gives us Rays of Fire as a cantrip. For armor, now this will depend on your race and stuff. As a hardwood half-elf, the only thing I have proficiency with is light armor. So, elegant studded leather, plus two to initiative rolls, advantage on stealth checks, and shield as a spell. The Amulet of Greater Health, now you don't have to have this, you can switch this out for another amulet, maybe the one that heals people, whatever you really want. I'm just gonna take this so we have advantage on our constitution saving throws. The Caustic Band will add 2 damage to our weapon attacks. The Ring of Twilight will give us a plus 1 bonus to armor class while obscured. One of my favorite weapons in the game is Kerwin's Cauterizer. So there was an additional 1 to 4 fire damage which pairs very nicely with our gloves. And on a hit the target starts burning unless it succeeds that concentration saving throw. And once again please don't worry about not being proficient, once we bind it we gain proficiency. And for a bow, the dead shot, because we get that minus one to our critical roll needed, which pairs very nicely with the great old one opening stat of having the enemies be frightened if we crit them. So that is my build. Now we are going to go find some combat and we'll show this off. Okay, before we do anything, as soon as you leave camp after a long rest, do not forget to bind your packed weapon. Like that. And if you so wish, you could use your invocation, as you should, to get those seven temporary hit points. Okay, we're in the combat, and as you can see, our lovely warlock is not only displaced thanks to her cape, but also is the same initiative as the rogue, meaning we get to go first. Which is really good because it means we can set up all our spells. So, let's start with the Hunger Hovadar to show this off, and why it's one of my favourite spells in the entire game. We're going to place this, we'll say, here so it entraps everyone. And there you go, they are all within the hunger, which means they will start their turn, taking 2 to 12 cold damage, and then possibly if they are still within it, they will end their turn with 2 to 12 cold damage. Okay, so you can see we're just about to take damage, now we could use these to do our spell slots. However, we only have one spell slot left, because warlocks don't get that many. 
Thirt, you would have that option of being able to Hellish Rebuke to shield up if you really need it. Now one of my favourite ways to play a Warlock is to benefit from your uh, Eldritch Invocations as well as your Pact Boons. And one of my favourites to do this is Darkness. There you go. And now, the enemies are blind, however we can fully see. And we'll see how this plays out now. And there you go, you see the enemy missed us twice. And now we'll show you off the very basic and how the attacks work and how good we are. So, this is our first attack. A big crit and we did an insane amount of damage. And because we critted, the enemy is now frightened and burning. And then we can cover that off with another attack. So they now have two rounds of burning. And that's what makes this build really good is you can stand within darkness and attack people. But where the real benefit comes from is what you'll see in the next round. And you see the enemy took three burning then. And we saved our concentration. Now, this is where I think this really comes into a huge benefit. Because the Warlock, in my opinion, is innately a very cantrip heavy class. The reason being is how very few spell slots they get. As you can see down the bottom, they only get three level 5 spell slots at level 12. Which isn't a lot, so your action economy is really key with a Warlock. Which is why I think Eldritch Blast is taken by 99% of all Warlock players. And this is how I like doing this build. You stand in darkness, and you blast things. So for example, we killed one, and now we blasted one out of the darkness. And how this really works to someone's benefit is if you can darkness up your Warlock and stand with it, and you just throw your Eldritch Blast out at enemies. And again, we just stand in the darkness and blast the enemies away. Now actually this works really, really well if you are higher up, so if you can darkness from say up here, and rain down death on the enemies from above, that is the best way to play this. Obviously as a tutorial, that's just an example. But, it is so worth noting that this is such a viable build of just staying hidden, holding concentration on darkness, and just raining death with your Eldritch Blast from afar. It's such a good way to dwindle enemies down. You get three Eldritch Blasts around, they can do a massive amount of damage. You can really... Not only is it a damage dealing spell, but if you can see that your wizard or sorcerer is going to get swarmed and you can hit them with the Eldritch Blast, you can push the enemies away, which can help really protect your companions without even really being the basis of the attack. And again, thanks to our Pact Boon and the weapon we're using, we're viable in melee combat as well. Despite the fact we are the basis of us is a ranged combatant, or a support character, or a battlefield controller, we have the ability where we can come up to an enemy. And when we hit, when it stops lagging, there you go, for a decent amount of damage. And if you couple this with Kerwin's Cauterizer to then cause burning on top. And as I said, it's a great way of just finishing a fight, just like that. And then you can start to close down the distance here. Because of your good movement, and continue wiping the enemies out, like that. So that is my great old one build. A amazing darkness hidden character that can blast enemies cause destruction and hit enemies in melee really good whether that's to protect themselves or to close off enemies that are trying to flank you or whatever it's just an overall great build so if you have enjoyed please drop this episode like it helps me amazingly if you're new and not subscribed you'd like to that'd also be amazing and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next build bye guys